Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So most global equity markets are down lower this morning, uh, especially over in the Asia-Pacific region where the Chinese stock markets have been crashing overnight with uh, the Chinese equivalent of the Nasdaq dropping 8.3% just in one day. It's the biggest one day fall ever in its history. It's now down 27% from its highs. If you take into consideration last week, um, those Chinese markets were down 13% alone. Now some of these major markets are dropping 8% in a day. Um, so the world's second biggest economy it's, it kind of has its law unto its own, so it doesn't really impact like the US markets or anything else. But you know, if China slows down and China is in, certainly looks to be in some big trouble just now, massively over, overheated. Um, and the question is, are people going to start keep buying the dips? Because a lot of people are getting burned out there just now. Not any of our, not any like kind of European or US investors, Sorry, man, but local Chinese sure, investors yeah, are getting hit. So nevertheless, Greek uh, Greece deal is uh, still Sorry, not completed. Uh, and that's causing European markets and uh, the US market as well to, uh, to, to tap off. And you can see it yesterday, we thought we were going to get a deal and obviously it just never materialized uh, and we are still drifting a little bit lower. So 17,747 is the next potential support. We're trading below both moving averages and the technical indicators are relatively neutral. Matt D is giving a sell signal. Um, not a huge amount of economic data due out today either and I can imagine that the next meeting for uh, between Greece and the ECB and IMF is um, is on Saturday. Uh, I guess if you're trading euro dollar or you're trading the Germany 30 or a lot of European indices, uh, you'll want to think about well, which direction you think the market's going to go heading into next week. Could be a lot of volatility. Uh, so just one thing to uh, to bear in mind. Because obviously, at the weekend, if something happens or doesn't happen on Sunday night, you could be looking at some uh, some decent moves, um, depending obviously what what comes out. Looking at the UK 100, it's reversed course quite quite staunchly, coming up to 67.71, which is potential short-term support. Other technical indicators are neutral. Um, the tips of these candles here coincide with the tips of the candle from the 10th of June. Uh, could be a kind of a very short double top formation and we're selling off quite aggressively that would be a tweezer top right there uh, with the two the two tips of the candles quite so long push right back down both negative closing candles but long legged long legged upwards action there which is indicative of the fact that tried to break it was a lot higher and got pushed all the way back down so from a technical perspective that's usually quite negative we're trading below both technical indicators but 67.71 is the support level we break below that that's 66.86 Looking at Japan, 225, the dollar yen back down 123, it's been way higher. Uh, it's doing okay. Some decent um, figures sorry. out of Japan. Uh, consumer spending has actually increased a lot higher than expected, so it's giving a little bit of extra extra push there. Could still be a little bit of uh, stimulus due in Japan. People are still talking about that, incidentally. Uh, but 20,868 is potential resistance. Out of many of the indices, Japan is probably outperforming most other major markets out there. So moving on to dollar yen. Uh, because of the uncertainty over US interest rates as ever, because attention has completely shifted to Greece, even though we had a decent GDP figure come out of, well, decent ish, it wasn't fantastic, out of a contraction incidentally, but it came in as, as, as expected. Um, people were not really paying that much attention to the US dollar at the moment. Uh, and you can see we're trading just below that uh, 21 period SMA and 124.42 with the next potential support, one spot, 121 spot 90. Moving on to West Texas crude, I'm guessing it's not done a huge amount. Uh, consolidating around 59.50 again. We're just on the slightly on the wrong side of that just now. Um, this is turning into a little bit like what dollar yen was a couple of months back. It's just completely flattening out, consolidating around, uh, oscillating around a specific level, and it looks to be 59.50. Uh, so not really that exciting to trade, to be completely honest, at this stage. Looking at gold, it's getting pushed down each session. That would be five, six sessions in a row, and the red. Um, we're still looking at potentially 1163 is the next uh, short term support, then followed by 1137. Um, and this is obviously all interest rate and in US dollar um, dominated. In terms of like uh, safe havens, gold's not as popular as it used to be. People would much rather buy the Japanese yen if things get really dicey uh, and there's a big sell off in the markets. So moving on to uh, euro dollar, uh, euro dollar. Uh, Again, jumping around with this uh, 21 period SME. One spot 11 is a level that many technical FX traders will be looking at. That's the last bastion of support for your dollar. Um, if there is no deal, the euro is probably going to get a little bit shaken. But uh, even though the discussions have been all over the place, the euro reacted badly on, uh, on, on this day right here. 
on Tuesday. Um, but that was a technical break of a trend line compounded with the lack of a deal in Greece. But then the last couple of days it's not really done a huge amount. So uh, maybe there are obviously a certain element of that uncertainty is priced in. Traders are, are willing to take a position. Looking at bond yields as well, traders are betting that there will be a deal reached and you can see that in Euro dollar as well. Looking at GBP USD, one spot 57.43 seems to be the next level. Um, last three days candles have been jump have been kind of oscillating around there again, with one spot 59 being the potential next resistance. Any further downwards pressure, one spot 56. We've got a negative crossover in the MACD just developing with the histogram going just to zero. And obviously we had a sell signal on the RSI number of sessions ago, and we're just about to get a sell signal on the slow stochastic. It's not come yet. So should we get any any further uh, downwards momentum to look at one spot 56, you'll probably get these uh, crossovers here uh, on the MACD and the slow stochastic. And from a purely technical perspective, that puts a bit of added pressure on GBP USD, but really depends how the UK macro data continues to roll out. So as I said, not much due today. It's all about Greece. Next meeting is tomorrow and Saturday. So there could be some sort of deal reached at the weekend when the markets are shut. So as I said, just be wary of any of your exposure over the weekend. It doesn't be quite clear about the direction that you're trying to uh, trying to go in. And uh, on Monday, you've got German retail sales and you've got uh, German CPI followed by US housing index. Uh, and as ever, keep your eye on the chart form. I can see that Jasper has already been posting some analysis there. This actually just yesterday, but he's got the DAX, uh, Germany 30, UK 100 and NASDAQ. And keep your eye on insights for um, kind of updates from our global analyst team about what's moving the markets today. And join us again on Monday to find out what happened next.